Well, well, well. It's time. We just got done watching ECW December to Dismember 2006. This is our little Christmas present to you guys. <laughs> this review. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it started off so well, and it went so downhill at the end. Oh, my God. Oh, man, we need we need to do more fucking retro reviews. <laughs> oh, it started, it started off so good, and then by the end, like, the crowd was pissed. Oh, <laughs> well. Dude. It's st- okay, so I guess we should we should um l- list off the matches or whatever. Just like cause it, it's so. F- so, the show started <laughs> with a World Tag Team Championship match. It was the Hardys defending against Eminem, uh, Mercury and Nitro with Molina. And this was by far the best match on the show, the only good match on the show. <laughs> this was it, a great tag team match. It doesn't get better from this. <laughs> it gets worse. So much worse. It gets so, so bad. So, I mean, this was a great tag team match, great spots between both teams. Uh, I really think Eminem is an underrated tag team in terms of when you talk about the history of tag teams. They were actually a really decent tag team. Um, But also, Austin had told me that they had done Survivor Series, and then a week later did December to Dismember, and then a week later did Armageddon. (laughs) Like, that's so fucked. (laughs) It's so fucked. (laughs) Like, oh. So so here's, here's actually the reason I mentioned that. That's because... Compared to Survivor Series and Armageddon, which had over, like, 200,000, uh, like, pay-per-view buys, this Mm -hmm. had (laughs) 90,000 pay-per-view buys, and it also had only 4,800 people. Oh, man, so, this, uh, so this match took place... A week before the famous match where Joey Mercury got his nose fucking busted wide open and he was bleeding everywhere. So this happened a week before that. So, yeah, I mean, there's not really much to say about this match. It was a great tag team match. I had no issues with it whatsoever. Uh, Uh, It was was really good. Yeah, both great teams. Uh, Hopefully we'll see... If Jeff goes to AW, hopefully we'll see this kind of Hardys. Hopefully. But who knows. Yeah. Because I know, I know, I was telling Austin when we were watching this, I'm like, I know when Jeff goes to AW, they're going to put him with Matt, obviously. And I know they're going to do the Hardys and the Young Bucks. I know they're going to do it, and they're going to do it to death. I know they are, and it's going to piss me off. But anyway... Back to let's go back to back in time, back to 2006. So the Hardys win with uh, Eminem was going for a top rope snapshot, which is their finisher, and Matt Hardy breaks it up, hits them with what they call it a double twist of fate, but really it was a double cutter. And then Matt put Joey Mercury on top of Johnny Nitro, and then Jeff did a swanton on the Joey Mercury on Johnny Nitro, straight on the Joey Mercury's back. And Jeff got the cover, one, two, three, Hardys retain. And it was a nice, hot way to start off the pay-per-view. Hot opening match. The crowd was pumped. The crowd was energized. And boy, were they let the fuck down. Oh, my now, God. Now, we only had one other one other hot match of the night tonight. And that's only because of the women that was in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what match was after uh, this? Was, it, was the Matt Striker match after this? It was Matt Stryker versus Balls Mahoney. <laughs> in a Strikers Rules match. <laughs> or in an yeah. extremely enforced rules match. So, Matt Stryker had this weird fucking get up. <laughs> like, what the fuck? 
His trunks yeah. were way too hot. His trunks are like they looked like a precursor to Sunny Kiss's trunks. And that's so, that's fucking. He was wearing like these uh, tight ass trunks that had a picture of his face on the back of it, and they were like so tight they were going up his ass. And the commentators, like, first of all, uh, Joey Styles and Taz were on commentary, so that, that's already a great commentary team. Oh, and we'll, so, we'll get we'll get to Taz. <laughs> so they were commenting about Matt Stryker's tights, and they were laughing at the fact that he had a picture of his own face on the back. And Taz made the comment. He was like, he was like, Matt Stryker has his own face on the back of his tights, and it has a crease in it. <laughs> They they were clowning Matt Stryker, but uh yeah he faced Balls Mahoney and this match sucked really it was just boring. Uh, Balls Mahoney was super over with the crowd, and every time he did a move or he punched, the crowd would chant Balls for whatever reason. And the commentators were dogging on Balls Mahoney too, because. They're like, uh, they're like, you see Balls Mahoney's outfit, and he's like, yeah, I heard he picked him out of, uh, I heard he picked it out himself, and they were saying that he was a Neanderthal. Like they were, they were clowning both of these guys. They said if, uh, if uh, Matt Stryker touched his hair at all, like he was gonna get like a grease ball out <laughs> of his hair or some shit. Yeah. Oh, they were. Oh my God, man. Uh, well, I, I know the ending of this match because... I was taking a <laughs> shit. Devin... <laughs> <laughs> he fucking left halfway through. So, yeah. basically, um, Matt Stryker is just sitting there being a, being a heel. And then all that happens after that is Balls Mahoney hits like a... Like, you know that spine buster that Ted DiBiase Jr. used to do? Mm-hmm. He hits that one, two, three. It's over. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, so that was that. Balls Mahoney won. And then, oh my fucking god! The, after that, they cut to a backstage area. The backstage area where Sabu, who's supposed to be in the main event tonight, is laid out and has to be taken off from a stretch to a stretcher. And the crowd starts booing shit. heavily. Dude, they start fucking booing. And then Elijah Burke comes out. And they're still chanting, Bullshit! Bullshit! <laughs> yeah. Like, it... it, like it, it <laughs> they, they started... It was the second... Like, the third fucking match. That's when they started chanting bullshit. And it kept going on through the entire fucking show. Like, yeah. <laughs> They they are were so fucking pissed. And let's let's not let's not also forget to mention the guy that guy that was in the crowd looked like he he looked like fucking grim, like he looked like two ver, two grims mixed like combined. Yeah, that's he what had he looked like, like long hair and like a neck beard, and he had glasses on, and he he had a like a six XXL shirt on that said EC FNW on it. Oh my god! <laughs> they kept showing him. I had to him point too. it out to Devin. Yeah, I had I had to point it out to Devin because I'm just like, dude, do you see that guy in the in the back? And he's like, no, I don't, I don't. And I finally <laughs> like got got him to actually see him. He's like, no, I can't unsee that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once you is one of those people like once you see him, you can't unsee him. You can't lose him in the crowd once you see him. But uh, yeah, this but... match was a tag team match of Elijah Burke and Sylvester... What the fuck is his last name? Turkai. And they took on the team of the FBI, a.k.a. Little Guido and Tony Mamaluke. And they were accompanied by Trinity. Trinity. Trinity was the only nice thing about this match. <laughs> because this is a boring <laughs> tag team match. The crowd didn't care. It's really... Like, like legitimately, for most of these matches, when they had like women accompanying them, mm -hmm. that is the only thing that was enjoyable because Taz was simping over every fucking, and we'll get yeah. to major simping. <laughs> like, but he was simping over Melina. He was simping yeah. over fucking 
Trinity, and then oh, the, the next person, the, the other two people he was sent in for. We'll get to that, but it, it will actually like it was bad. Yeah. But this, this match is just like eh. Honestly. Yeah, the crowd. The crowd was like, they were already getting to the point where they were so bored during this match, and they were trying to like make Sylvester look like this strong powerhouse guy, and even like the commentators were calling him like a redwood and shit, like a tree, and saying how he's like strong <laughs> and all this. And they they put uh they put them over, so Elijah Burke and Sylvester, whatever the fuck his name is, won. And yeah, but then after the match is over, they keep attacking him, and he hits a muscle buster on Guido, and as soon as he picks up Guido for the muscle buster, the crowd starts going TNA, 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 and then the commentators are like, I don't know what that move was, and Taz was like, I think that was a uh, a uh, mu- muscle muscle buster. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> and then like then they were walking up the ramp like acting all tough and then Austin told me that like three weeks after that the Sylvester guy got fired. <laughs> so <laughs> what a run. <laughs> what a career. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Was the uh was the Tommy Dreamer match after this one? I believe so, yes. So this is the part of the show where it was starting to get from bad to worse because then after seeing that sh- at first after Sabu getting attacked and then seeing this shit now all they hear now fuck oh my oh my fucking god, hold on. Let me fucking. So I just picture it, right? The crowd is already upset. Fucking. The crowd is already pissed. And they're already getting bored. And. Right after all that shit, they hear this. Okay, this person has an intro. I didn't know that. Fuck you. But so th- this, keep on. Like I said, the crowd was pissed and they were getting bored. And then what's the next thing they hear to try to get them back into the show? Fucking Davari comes out with the great Kali, and the crowd is just dead. The crowd was so dead. And... They were so fucking done at this point. They're like, <laughs> "What the fuck did we just pay for?" Yeah, and then so Davari comes out with great Kali, and, and Davari is wrestling in this match. Great Kali is his manager. And the great Kali looks all intimidating. He's just looking strong. First of all, he had to duck to come out of the entrance ramp because he's so tall. And fucking... Then... Austin's favorite, a man that we've talked about on multiple occasions. Okay. Okay. He was all smiling and stuff. But I think I know why he was smiling. I think I know why he was smiling. He was thinking of the night... When the Dudley boys broke his wife's neck, and he was thinking of oh. the joy he felt when <laughs> when her neck was broken and snapped in half. Yes, the sir. fucking prick, Mister is my is my man bun offensive, Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And Ric Flair, he would always whip his dick out for the boys. You know, he said, "Yeah, that was just." He said, "Oh." Oh, you want to accuse Ric Flair of rape and sexual assault and all this? He's like, he's like, that's just Ric Flair. You don't understand Ric Flair. That was just for the boys. I think you were overreacting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, Tommy Dreamer. But yeah, so this was Tommy Dreamer versus Davari for... 
I don't know why this match was happening, to be honest with you. But... I don't know, but it was pretty shitty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was one spot where Davari was trying to... He had Tommy Dreamer in, like, a, a chokehold, but Davari was, like, so small that he couldn't get up onto Tommy Dreamer correctly. So it looked sloppy. And then at one point... I, I wasn't half paying attention because I saw the great Kali got ejected. Was there a reason for that? Did he do something? Okay, so he pulled down the the top rope oh. when when Davari threw like when Davari Irish whipped uh, Tommy Dreamer. He pulled down the top rope. And Tommy <laughs> Dreamer fell. <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> So great Kali gets ejected. And a great colleague doesn't fucking understand English. So he's, just, he's just standing there. And, and the commentators are like, they're like, well, I don't know why the great colleague is just standing there. If he doesn't leave, Davari is going to get ejected. I don't know why the great colleague is not leaving. And then Davari has to get out of the ring and translate to great colleague that he has to leave. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest. This show has made my mood better from the earlier review that I did of <laughs> AEW. Because this... <laughs> we need oh. to do more retro reviews because this was fucking hilarious as hell. Just how <laughs> fucking shitty this pay per view was. Yeah. Keep in mind, this pay per view was only two hours. Yeah. Oh my god. So, the way this match ended was Tommy Dreamer got caught in a roll up by Davari, and Davari won with a roll up. And uh, the commentators were like, oh, that was a, uh, an, an upset, and he stole, he stole that victory. And Devari, and Austin was celebrating because Tommy Dreamer lost. And. But that's not it. That's not it. So no, the be the best parts uh, yet to come. <laughs> so, fucking Davari is celebrating, and then all of a sudden we see <laughs> we see the great Kali bring Tommy Dreamer back out, and he's holding him in the air. No, the great... wait, 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 what? wait. So Tommy Dreamer was also running like he he was trying to find his fucking Pizza Hut yeah. in the back. For, for Davari, and then that's when <laughs> the great Kali just picks him up and, <laughs> He's, and takes he him fucking, back out. He fucking Kali bombed the hell out of him on the stage. They replayed it and like they, five times. I I swear I did not go in the back and and make sure that that was replayed six or seven times. <laughs> they kept replaying. I swear it. I wasn't part of the camera crew. <laughs> Tommy Dreamer was acting like he was fucking injured, and Taz was like, he was like, you know, I've, I've, I've known Tommy for a long time, you know, we used to go up and down the road with each other, and, and he's just like saying all this shit about Tommy Dreamer, he's like, you know, I, I just, I hope that, I hope that Tommy Dreamer's alright, you know, and then he starts getting up, and he's like, oh, you know, that's good, he, he's getting up. You know, <laughs> oh, it's like he, 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 at least he has his pride. <laughs> yeah, and I make the, I made the, I made the comment. He has his pride in his pizza. Uh, so that was that fucking match, and the, and the crowd at this point was just there had been like three shitty matches in a row, and the crowd was just like, okay, we'll hold out for the main event. So then comes. Oh no! Uh, is it the match? Then comes the mixed tag team match. Now, of... now I gotta be completely honest. The crowd was a little bit happy about this match. <laughs> yeah. So, this match was the team of. Uh, keep in mind a 34 year old Mike Knox and a 19 year old Kelly Kelly. That are in a kayfabe relationship, but the storyline is is that she's that she's cheating on Mike Knox with CM Punk, and they were going against the team of Kevin Thorne and Ariel, which, from what Austin tells me, this is her only pay per view appearance. So, yikes. 
And it was Kelly Kelly's first ever match. Oh, this was it. It, it was like it was both this was, Ke- Kelly Kelly's and Ariel's first ever match. And Ariel this, never this had pay per view was like the perfect shit storm for a bad show. <laughs> like, <laughs> and legit, it, it, the ent- on top top of that, Taz. Holy shit, Taz! So before <laughs> the match starts. Like, Kelly Kelly grabs a microphone, and just for no reason, it, she's like, oh, I just want to, I would I would just like to wish luck to CM Punk later on in the Elimination Chamber, and then Mike Knox is just like, You can tell she's never picked fuck? up a mic at all, too. <laughs> you <laughs> can tell she's like, this is like the first time she's ever picked up a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> so, the match itself honestly sucked, but... There was no paying attention to the match. It's, a, you had the crowd simping over Kelly Kelly because the crowd, the whole time that the women weren't tagged in, the crowd was chanting, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Like, they they wanted her in that damn match. So the crowd was simping. And, That's Taz, and Taz was simping over Kelly Kelly and Ariel. And keep mm-hmm. in mind, Ariel had this skirt on. Where every time she lifted up her legs or anything or did it did a move, her ass was fully shown pretty much legit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Taz was super simping because Taz like every time they were showing ass shot like Taz would like stumble over his words, and Taz would be like oh yeah, oh yeah my point uh he was like to get back to my point actually what was my point. <laughs> and he's like, uh, uh, Joey, uh, f- feel free to jump in at any time here, cause I, you know. And then Joey was like, Joey was like, you know, I can't do that, Taz, because I'm sitting here watching you fall apart over both Kelly Kelly and Ariel. And then Taz, <laughs> he was just simping. He kept making comments about. He was like, he was like, he, I don't know which one he was talking about, but he said something about. He's like, yeah, I'd like to see her get on her hands and knees. <laughs> He was calling, he, he kept calling fucking uh, Kelly Kelly an exhibitionist and how she wasn't experienced in the mm-hmm. ring, but she's experienced elsewhere. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and he was talking about how Ariel was, like, freaky, and he, and he was talking about, like, her being a vampire, and he was like, you know, you, he's like, you, she's a vampire chick, you don't know what she could be capable of. Oh, he was, Taz was fucking full-blown simping. God, Taz is, is was with his down with his on shades on show. too, mind you, with his shades on. <laughs> his shades were on the entire fucking show. <laughs> I don't know how that didn't hurt his eyes either. I don't know. But, uh, but... so at one point in the match, Kelly, uh, so Kelly Kelly and Ariel are wrestling. Taz is fucking drooling at the mouth. And stumbling over his words like he's drunk, and Joey Styles Kevin is Thorne's trying to thinking about how his failed Mordecai run. <laughs> fucking Joey Styles is trying to hold the fucking thing together, but he just can't. And fucking <laughs> then, like, uh, so uh, ke- also keep in mind when Kelly Kelly got tagged in and Ariel got tagged in, Kelly Kelly did not hit a single move. She got her ass whooped. Didn't hit a single move. She went to tag in Mike Knox, and Mike Knox was just like, nah, fuck you, bitch. And he left. <laughs> and so then... Oh, my God. Oh, and the ending was so bad, too. Because Kevin Thorne was just there. Like, he didn't even mean anything to the match like anymore. I, like I said, like I said, Kevin Thorne was just thinking about, like, well, you know, I could have faced The Undertaker. The rest of the game. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> So what fucking move did she hit on Kelly Kelly to end the match? It, it was, was like, like a, a it was like a chokehold STO. Yeah, and then she just pinned Kelly Kelly one two three, and then the the crowd was just oh, deflated. Keep in mind though, this is this is an, another Taz thing. The way she pin she pinned Kelly Kelly, her ass was on Kelly Kelly's face. Mm-hmm. So Taz was just like, oh, what the what the hell? We thought. We thought he was going to have a fucking heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Ariel and Kevin Thorne win the match, and nobody really gave a shit at the end of the day. The crowd was just like, 
fucking, they were done. They were done. Was there any other matches before the main event that I'm forgetting about? Uh, no, but there was a segment where Paul Heyman had sat there and uh, talked to Hardcore Holly in the back and said, <laughs> you're in the match. <laughs> yeah, and then and then Hardcore Holly's just like, like the crowd's booing at Hardcore Holly when, when uh, Paul Heyman puts him in the match. And Hardcore, Hardcore Holly's just like, uh, he's just like, all right. And then they show him standing there. He's just like, he's just like, all right, okay. <laughs> and that was like his whole reaction to being in the match. And then they also had showed uh, Sabu being put onto a stretcher and taken out in an ambulance. And they showed uh, RVD and CM Punk standing there. Um, then also they showed a shot of... Uh, so it was Big Show, Test, Hardcore Holly, and Paul Heyman followed by some security guards that were ha- that had biker helmets on. And they were all walking down this hallway, and Hardcore Holly looks so fucking uncomfortable. I'm guessing because right before that, Paul Heyman was probably screaming his head off about how bad WWE CW was. But... (laughs) So, we get to the main event of December to Dismember. This, this, This wonderful gift that has been left for us all by Santa this holiday season. The Extreme (laughs) Elimination Chamber match. This match was CM Punk versus Hardcore Holly versus Test versus Big Show versus Bobby Lashley versus RVD for the ECW Championship. And the rules for the match were, it's it's the regular Elimination Chamber rules, but the only difference is when somebody's released from their pod, not only is the superstar released, they made this very clear in the rules graphic, not only is the superstar released, but a weapon is also released. And if you want to know the weapons they had in this match, there was four. You had a chair, standard for a wrestling match. You had a barbed wire baseball bat, which is like, okay, that's kind of extreme. And then you a have table. a table, so you're like, okay, maybe there'll be a table spot. And then finally you have a crowbar. Just a crowbar. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just a crowbar. Because apparently they thought a crowbar was extreme. <laughs> but I, I'm going to be completely honest. I did not think that an Elimination Chamber match could be worse than the... Um, uh, 2020 Women's Elimination Chamber. Uh, but, oh my god, this had to be one of the worst chambers I've ever seen. <laughs> and this is the thing I was t- I was telling Austin about because at the, around this time, you know, you had so many great Elimination Chamber matches, like the first one where Shawn Michaels won the World Heavyweight Championship, and you had other ones where they showed people pretty much beating each other half to death in the in the chamber, showing how dangerous and destructive the chamber was. And you take, and that's without weapons. So you would think that match with weapons added to it would be ten times fucking more bloody and destructive. But no, this wasn't even close to how bad those, not to how like extreme those matches were. So it starts off with RVD and Hardcore Holly. They're the first two men, and the crowd is just—they're already pissed. That Sabu's not in the match. Uh, so, t- to preface this, Big Show is in the pod with the baseball bat. Bobby Lashley is in the pod with the table. Test is in the pod with the crowbar. Kind of fitting. I don't know why. And then CM Punk is in the pod with the steel chair. So, it starts off with RVD and Hardcore Holly. They're just doing a little back and forth. And like I said, the crowd's already pissed that Sabu's not in it. And fucking... Oh, also, I want to mention this real quick. I forgot. So, before this match, I I completely forgot to mention this. At the end of the fucking... Oh, my God. At the end of the fucking mixed tag team match, for no reason at all, Kevin Thorne and Ariel were standing there. Oh, And then fucking Sandman comes out through the crowd for no reason at all. (laughs) He, he busted himself open with a beer can. <laughs> yes. Like, why? Uh, 
let's 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 uh, uh since we're talking about the Sandman, we might as well see his uh, occurrence with the ECW zombie. Oh, so Austin mentioned this to me. I don't know what the ECW zombie is, but apparently it's something that I need to I need to lay my eyes on. So <laughs> this was on the first episode of ECW television. So you know. Jesus Christ. The very first like the first WWE ECW episode. Yeah. Oh no, I already see the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> brutally, the Sandman brutally canes the zombie. All right, in three, two, one, go. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is, the crowd this is, is the just like, what the, the fuck? This is the start of the show, by the way. Why? Why was this a thing? Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can hear him. You can hear him mouth. Give me the mic. <laughs> Is he gonna say brains? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! Oh my fucking God! What is this? <laughs> <laughs> People in the crowd are like, what is this? <laughs> the crowd is so dead. <laughs> There's oh. a child right there by the fucking. He's getting hit by beer. He busts himself open. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Every time. <laughs> why? Like, why on earth was this a thing that happened? He's just stepping on that kid's drink and food that he got from the concession stand. <laughs> There's so much children in this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> He's apparently punching out a prison prison guard. That's ECW. Oh my god. Why? on WWE's official channel. So apparently, the if, according to the comments, the zombie was played by independent wrestler Tim Arson. Apparently he passed away in 2015. Oh, damn. So I guess they could bring the zombie character back if they wanted to. Could he be an actual zombie? No. Oh, right. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. But fuck, like, why Why even have that as a segment? What the fuck, man? That was the first, like, thing that happened on EC WWE ECW TV. Oh, well, from that, back to the main course here. The Extreme Elimination Chamber. Oh, so, like I said, we start off with RVD and Hardcore Holly, they're going at it, the crowd's pissed, the Sabu's not in it, and the crowd at this point has been let down by the past four fucking matches, 
they're just ready to see some extreme shit to get their money's worth, right? So, they're, they're just going back and forth. There's no weapons, so not a whole lot happens. It's just them wrestling back and forth. And then the first person to come out... Oh, actually, there was one spot where... Uh, Hardcore Harley was on the outside and RVD dove at him, but Hardcore Harley moved, so RVD landed on the wall, and Taz was like, oh my god, he's like Spider-Man, and then he dove on the Hardcore Harley, uh, but, so the first person to come out of the pod was CM Punk, who the crowd was behind in this match, everybody wanted CM Punk to win this match, uh, Punk comes out with the steel chair, and he... Hits Hardcore Holly in the face with the chair because this is back when they did headshots with the chairs because that was before all the CTE stuff. And um, then he hits RVD with the chair. Uh, there was a couple of decent spots. There was one where RVD went for a spin kick, missed, and then Punk hit a Famouser on him onto the steel chair. Uh, Punk took a, I think it was a belly to belly onto the steel chair, I think. Uh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure at one point RVD hit him with a van terminator with the steel chair in the corner. Now, at this point, me and De- me and Devin are like, I think we know, I think I know who who gets eliminated first. Yeah, we both seen yeah, this match I, before this, so. And I'm just I just like, remember how bad it um, was. Oh no, because I'm just thinking like, oh no, they're already pissed, and I know who's getting eliminated first. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's what I'm fucking thinking. Yep. So after all that goes down, the first, the next person to come out of the pod is Test, and he comes <laughs> out with the crowbar. <laughs> And Tess starts hitting people with the crowbar. Uh, also, RVD got busted open. I don't remember what spot he got busted open on, though. Uh, I don't remember. There was also another spot where RVD hit a superplex on CM Punk. Uh, oh wait, was it RVD? Or it might have been Hardcore Holly. One of those two hit a superplex on CM Punk. Uh, but Test was digging his crowbar into RVD's forehead cut. And which was disgusting, and then he was choking out CM Punk with the crowbar. Um, I'm, I, there, there was this so it was so like just dead. The match was just dead. Well, let, like, let's get what, what became like. Let's get to what uh, became like the the point of where people were get, were fucking done. Yeah. Like okay, so I'm okay. So, <laughs> RVD is fighting with CM Punk. Of course, this is all when the, the first four people are in, in the matchup. Mm-hmm. And we're waiting on the other two. So, <laughs> RVD hits a frog splash on CM Punk. One, two, three. CM Punk is the first man eliminated. And you just hear the fucking booze. <laughs> yeah. You just fucking start hearing it. Yeah, and then the crowd just goes, Bullshit. Bullshit, bullshit, because they oh, were all behind CM Punk. Thing, we're not even done too, because then, then Tess uh, boots Hardcore Holly, pins him. One, two. <laughs> Hardcore Holly kicks out, but he's eliminated. <laughs> yeah, he clearly kicked out, and then the, but the referee was like, "Nope, you're eliminated." And the crowd was just like, "What?" And even the commentators were like, "Wait, what just happened? He kicked out." <laughs> like even and Taz then, and Joey Styles were confused. And then Tess makes it even worse because mm. he take he takes down RVD and then he puts a chair on top of RVD, goes up to the top of, of Big Show's pod, and hits this giant fucking elbow. One, two, three. <laughs> RVD is gone. So mm. none, absolutely none of the ECW originals are in this fucking match no more. And people yep. are pissed. It's yeah. it's done. It's it's so fucking finished to where people are just, they're like, we want a refund. Yeah. We want a refund. After CM Punk got eliminated, they were like, well, this is bullshit. I guess we'll cheer for RVD now. 
and then RVD got eliminated, and they're like, well, fuck, we don't want to cheer any of these three guys that are left. <laughs> so then it's just a <laughs> the last solid, people like... That were left was... It's a solid, like, ten minutes, but, like, the last people that were left was Test, uh, Bobby Lashley, and the fucking Big Show. Yeah. And All it, people we that just are had not to sit ECW there. Because he eliminated Hardcore Holly and RVD back-to-back, like, we had to sit there for a solid, like, two, three minutes of just Test laying in the ring... <laughs> <laughs> While the fans were booing the fucking building, uh, the building, the ro- booing the roof off the building, and so at finally Bobby Lashley it comes out next. But no, the the security guards with the biker helmets they put they uh, knock out the referee and they put their nightstick in front of the door so Bobby Lashley can't open the door. And so Bobby Lashley starts getting angry, and Tess gets in his face and is like, ha ha, you can't get out of the pod. And fucking, then Bobby Lashley takes the table that's inside the pod with him. He starts jamming it up into the roof of the pod and busts the roof open. Then he climbs out of the roof of the pod. Tess tries to get up there and get him Bobby Lashley knocks him down and then Bobby Lashley dives onto Test and then Test just proceeds to get his fucking ass whooped by Bobby Lashley Bobby Lashley starts throwing him around throwing him into the pods and then before you know it Bobby Lashley hits hits a spear oh also the at this point the crowd was chanting learn to wrestle and the crowd was chanting you both suck <laughs> We want a refund bullshit. Like, they they were so pissed. And then Test eats a spear from Bobby Lashley. One, two, three. So then we got to wait another minute for Big Show to come out. <laughs> and Bobby Lashley <laughs> takes it upon himself to fucking uh, lawn dart the fucking table at Big Show's pod. It does nothing but break the legs off the table. And Big Show's just like, what the fuck are you doing? And then Bobby Lashley throws the chair at the pod as hard as he can. Nothing happens. So then, finally, it's time for Big Show to come out. Bobby Lashley grabs the chair. And at at this point, like, well, actually, right before he came out, Big Show got down on his knees like he was praying. And Paul Heyman was, was talking, talking to Paul. him. And Paul Heyman was like, he was like, oh, it's a... Uh, uh, he was like, you you have to be the sole survivor. You have to retain the ECW championship. And he was like, the, uh, he was like, Bobby Lashley is a destructive man. He's unstoppable. And you're you're the giant and this and that, like trying to hype him up. So when Big Show finally does come out, he gets the barbed wire bat. And everybody was so fucking out of this match and disappointed that when Big Show walked out, Taz was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's literally what Taz said when Big Show held up the weapon. Oh. He's like, "Oh yeah, I forgot about that thing." Don't forget, don't forget what they were chanting. They they were chanting for Big Show to beat his ass. Beat his yeah. Ass. So basically, in the situation, Big Show was the heel, and Bobby Lashley was supposed to be the face that was beloved by the fans. But Bobby Lashley was actually a force down your throat face and the crowd was against him and they hated him so as <laughs> soon as Big Show walked out with that baseball bat the crowd was like they are like whoop his ass whoop his ass whoop his ass which by the way nobody got hit with that barbed wire before you're wondering uh, no. so so basically Big Show starts swinging the bat at him but Lashley's using the chair to deflect the shots and they go to the outside where Big Show swings the bat, gets it stuck in the chains, and then Bobby Lashley hits Big Show with the chair, and then throw he throws Big Show through one of the pods, and then like Paul Heyman's like yelling at Big Show to get up, and he's like, "You can't let him win. You have you have to be the survivor," and all this shit. And Big Show just fucking busts out the other side of the pod with his shoulder, like, not giving a fuck. And then fucking Bobby Lashley attacks him. And then Big Show's leaning up against the ropes. 
And so Bobby Lashley decides to try to bounce off the chains like they were ropes to try to give himself leverage to clothesline Big Show over the ropes. But it was very sloppy because the chains gave him, like, nothing. So, and keep in mind, he's trying to get Big Show over the top rope. Not just any man, Big Show, who at this point in his career was, like, 500 pounds. So, they get back into the ring, and at this point, the crowd the crowd was so done. The crowd was, at this point, I think people were walking out. I, th- like... This, this was so bad. And they went back and forth a little bit more. Big Show started doing his oh, scream shit. And, and the crowd was just like, "Both you both suck. You both suck. But then, I, I think, as soon, I think at this point, the, as the soon as Bobby Lashley starts mark. getting offense, as soon as Bobby Roll Lashley out. gets any offense, the crowd just goes, let's go, Big Show. <laughs> and every time Bobby Lashley hit a move, the crowd would be like, <laughs> Every time, at this point, I'm pretty sure the ECW mark, the big giant ECW mark in the crowd, would actually waddled out because I couldn't see yeah. him after, after this like match. <laughs> yeah. So first, the Big Show tries to go for a choke slam. Bobby Lashley counters, and then Big Show, uh, the ending spot of the match, Big Show tries to go for a power slam on Lashley. Lashley counters. Uh, Big Show goes for a clothesline, he ducks it, Lashley spears Big Show, and, like, right before this happened, was like, Austin was like, he was like, dude, there's only two minutes left on this pay-per-view, <laughs> and we're like, oh, God, so Lashley spears him right after Austin says that, one, two, three, and Bobby Lashley is a, I guess, two-time ECW champion, and the crowd was so fucking, they were fuming, People in the there people was, in the front row were flipping him off. Like Bobby Lashley was holding up the title. Were, people were flipping him off. People in the crowd were chanting the, "fuck you." People, people were he like he was offering to like like high five people in the crowd. <laughs> and this one guy, I remember this one <laughs> this one fucking guy. No, not the guy that was flipping him off, but the there was a guy in there. He was just like shaking his head in disapproval. Like, no, I'm Dude, not he, fucking him up. Even got to the point, like, right before Lashley won, like, the crowd was so bored that somebody in the front row just started dancing, and the crowd was paying more <laughs> attention to that guy than the match. Like, it was so bad. And then, like, oh, my God, man. So Bobby Lashley walks up the ramp, and Paul Heyman is nowhere to be seen at this point because he fucking walked out of the company. <laughs> Like, legitimately, he walked out and never came back. And so then Bobby Lashley walks up the ramp and is celebrating. And and the announcers thank everybody for watching December to this member. And Bobby Lashley holds the title up on the stage and gets way more fucking pyro than he deserved. Because they, they were just rubbing it in the crowd's face at that point. They gave Lashley so much pyro, and the crowd was, they were fucking livid. The crowd was fucking pissed. And it's and it just ended like that, with Bobby Lashley holding up the title. <laughs> and that was ECW December 2 Dismember from 2006. <laughs> oh my fucking god. I say we need to do more retro reviews because that was actually fucking yeah. gold. <laughs> that show, that was one of the cases where it, like, there's, there's, we've reviewed shows where, like, it's so bad that we can't watch the rest of it or it's so bad that we get infuriatingly mad. But this was a case where not, not so bad that it's good, but so bad that it was entertaining. It was, like, yeah. entertainingly bad. And the only thing that this pay-per-view is really remembered for is A, the Hardys and Eminem match, and B, the Extreme Elimination Chamber. That's the only two <laughs> things people ever talk about from this pay-per-view. Well, and Taz I see why. Ariel's ass, so. Yeah. But man, this this show sucked. This show <laughs> sucked, so man. Bad. 
Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you liked your Christmas present, this uh, review. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Oh, man. What, okay, so let, let's rate this show out of, out of five. Let's rate it. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll rate it, uh, we'll rate it, like, zero, zero being we want a refund, and five being EC dub. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, I guess I'll have to give this a three point five, out of because five. just how entertaining <laughs> out of the five, because just how entertaining it fucking was. I think I'm gonna go with a three, for the same reason. But there was <laughs> one thing I wanted to ask you about this show before we close out this review. So in the first match, as we were watching this, I, I want to know like, so there was this referee that had blonde hair. So I want to know like. What what was your beef with this referee? Because you I don't were know. getting on him in that match. You were like, you, like at just random points, you just break your sentence. You'd be like, man, like I really fucking hate that referee. Like he's pissing me off, and I'm just like, what like, the I fuck? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the way he was just, it looked like he was just fucking okay. So for context here, he's just waving his arms like he's pointing random directions. And it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, and uh, you just didn't look motivated at all. It, like, especially during the fucking Eminem and Hardy Boys match. Why aren't you motivated? Why are you just pointing at <laughs> random fucking places? Like, uh, of any match on this card, this is the match you should have been motivated for. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the referee for Ariel and fucking uh, Kevin Thorne's match, the mixed tag match. That fucking match had a referee that was more energized. <laughs> and was paying attention. <laughs> oh Frankly, it was God. probably because of it, Ariel's ass, but still, he was more energized. You know? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Like. Oh, this was certainly an experience to watch. Were there any <laughs> other ECW pay per views like this? Oh, shit. Uh, I mean. I don't think the one night stand pay per views were like this. They weren't bad. Um, I'm trying to think. I like shitty pay per views like this. I don't w know. WWE ECW pay per views. Let's see. Let's see what what there was. I wonder if this was their only one. <laughs> It might have been, honestly. Uh, okay. Oh no. What? This was that, that was their that was the last ever ECW pay per view. Oh. <laughs> the God. only pay per views they had <laughs> for WWE ECW was One Night Stand two thousand five, One Night Stand two thousand six, and. December to dismember, and that was it. <laughs> oh my god! The last one they had before 2005 was January 2001 ECW Guilty as Charged, and then oh, before dear. that was December 2000 ECW Massacre on 34th Street, <laughs> and then before that's just all like the classic ECW stuff. Oh, oh, they had God. one called Holiday Hell. Oh my God, oh, they had one called do. ECW Beer, Blood, Babes, and Bar Wire. I'm probably, <laughs> I'm probably gonna regret this. Oh no, I'm probably gonna regret this, Devin. I'm probably gonna regret this. Oh no, what? I think we should watch the pay per view. <sighs> Where David Arquette oh, no. defended the WCW <laughs> World Championship. Oh, this sum this sums up ECW so much. You want to hear one of their uh, ECW pay per views? What? You don't know what it was called. What was it called? As good as it gets. Oh. No. Born. Oh, there's one called Orgy of Violence. <laughs> Wrestle Palooza. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Ultimate Jeopardy. ECW Natural Born Killers. <laughs> ECW The Doctor Is In. <laughs> ECW Requiem for a Pitbull. What the fuck? Oh, you thought Massacre on 34th Street was bad. They had ECW Massacre on Queens Boulevard. <laughs> I'm there trying was one to figure out what... Big Ass Extreme Bash. <laughs> oh, Gangsta's Paradise. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, there was one called ECW Barbed Wire Hoodies and Choke Slams. Oh no. Okay, so it's it's Slambury. <laughs> I think we should watch Slambury next. EC ECW the night the line was crossed. <laughs> what are these names? <laughs> ECW Super Summer Sizzler. <laughs> ECW Terror at Tabor. ECW Battle of the Belts. ECW Market Street Mayhem. Oh, no. What the fuck? Apparently that this that... wasn't their first December to dismember because they had one in 1995. They had one in... Uh, did they have one? No, they didn't. Okay. They had one in 1995, and they had one, okay, maybe they only had one before this, I don't see, hold on, yeah, okay, I guess, I guess before this, they had one previous December, oh, no, oh, no, never mind, yeah, they only had, they only had one other previous December to dismember. Oh, Devin, I think we need to do this pay-per-view. What? Uh, Slambury 2000. <laughs> you want to know the card? Card? I think so. You want to know the card? Yeah. Chris Candido versus The Artist. Oh, no. Terry Funk in a heart... This, okay, this is... Oh, wait, that Chris Candido match was for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. A mm. hardcore match for the WCW Hardcore Championship. Terry Funk versus Norman Smiley and Ralphus. Oh. oh no. Sean Stasiak versus Kurt Henning. Not Sean Stasiak. For the WCW United States Heavyweight Championship. Scott Steiner versus Captain Huge Erection. <laughs> oh, we have to watch that match. Mike Awesome versus Chris Canyon. The Total Package, aka Lex Luthor, or, <laughs> Lex Luger, versus Buff Bagwell. Uh. Shane Douglas versus Ric Flair. Mm. <laughs> Sting versus Vampiro. Hulk Hogan. Oh, versus no. Billy Gunn with Eric Bischoff as a special guest referee. <laughs> Why Billy and the Gunn? Fucking... <laughs> or, it's not Billy Gunn, Billy, Billy Kidman, I'm sorry. Oh, I still. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but in the triple cage match for the WCW World <sighs> Heavyweight Championship, Jeff Jarrett versus and David Arquette. In oh, wait, no, did Jeff cage? Jarrett? No, it's Jeff Jarrett versus David Arquette. And Diamond Dallas Page. Oh my god. And it's a triple cage match. What the fuck? <laughs> I want We should watch that. I also want to watch... Uh, was there one where Vince Russo wrestled as champion? Did he ever wrestle as I champion? Think that was a, I think that was an episode of WCW. Oh no. <laughs> I want to see Vince Russo wrestle. Because I've never seen him Give wrestle. Give me a second. I need to see... And I think he wrestled Goldberg too, sadly. Oh! <gasps> <laughs> we are definitely watching that now. Okay, can we do Slambury first? Yes. When oh, are we gonna do that? Slambury, 
next week, Slamboree. Oh God, Slamboree. <laughs> I need to. I need to fucking search for Slamboree. Me a second. I need to search. It has to be on here. Please be on here. Jesus Christ. Are you starting the clip? I did already. Okay. <laughs> We're trying to find slam. this important information. <laughs> no, Look. come on, come on, come on. Vince Russo and Goldberg. Hang on a minute. I gotta, I gotta actually go to channels, maybe. I need to go to actual, like, WCW pay-per-views, I think. No, browse, I mean, not channels, it's fucking dumb. Browse. I, I, I need to figure out, because I, <laughs> that's gonna be a fucking disaster, Slambery. <laughs> Triple Cage. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Let me see. Attitude Era. Okay. Oh, they got all of Monday Nitro. I need to view all. Come on, where's Slamboree? Here it is. Eight seasons. Oh, oh. No, no, no. It's the one from 2000, so they have... Okay... Oh, it's the last Slambury as well! It's the last one! <laughs> it's Slambury. Slambury 2000. Mm, who do you and the, and the, who do you the wrestle? description Goldberg? is. No, 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 no. That's, that's not. I'm talking about uh, Diamond Dallas. That's the one with the fucking David Arquette. I'll mm. find. Let me see. Oh, God. It has to be. I'll have to go to Nitro. It has to be one like 2000 or 2001 of Nitro. I'm looking for it. Oh, God. 98, 99. 2000. We're going to go into... Okay, holy shit. There's a lot here. 52 episodes. Jesus Christ. In 2000. I... I... Some of these fucking... Oh, David Flair! Oh. Not David Flair, oh god. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh my god, I thought, forgot about Ernest the Cat Miller. Oh. <laughs> oh god, Stacy Keebler is Miss Hancock. Oh, here it is. Oh no. September 25th, 2000. Oh, it was it was against Booker T. Okay, oh. <laughs> it's still Vince Russo. <laughs> Vince Russo challenges Booker T for the WCW Championship. Mm. It's an hour and twenty eight minutes long. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh my! What the fuck is this? October twenty third, two thousand, and the the like the fucking thumbnail is. Is Scott Steiner with a tiger and fucking Lex Luger? What, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> I, I'm so confused. Oh god, I could only imagine the fucking. Oh, what's oh Jeff Jarrett? Oh Scott Steiner. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so we got we got to write this down. So. Let's see, after Christmas we have... Oh, no. One of these has to be the, the like, the New Year, like, the New Year's Day special. Mm -hmm. Or something, or, like, the, the new, like, the first... Oh, no. Which one should we do first? Should we do Slambury? Or should we do the... <laughs> oh, fucking episode of Nitro. Slambury, I think. Oh, God, so you're going to make it a new year, a new fucking Vince <laughs> Russo. <laughs> Either way, we're probably going to get our fair share of Vince Russo. And I think yeah. there's... In oh, no. Now I'm thinking about it, there's another fucking show, WCW-wise, that's really fucking shitty that involves Vince Russo. <laughs> you want to know what it is? What? I think it's Bash at the Beach 2000. Oh, God. Of course, it's 2000. 
<laughs> it's always 2000. <laughs> oh, oh, no. We'll be back next week with... Uh, Slambury, Slambury 2000. review. Slambury 2000 review. The last ever Slambury. Oh my fucking god. Stay tuned for, I'm sure Austin will be talking about David Arquette. <laughs> so, uh, back to the podcast, everyone. Oh Jeez. my god. <laughs>